to normal people, this looks broken. They, they don't understand why this is gonna happen. starting something new here. We're gonna do a build biology instead of a build breakdown. Basically, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth. Get it on the lift, because we got some really cool cars to show off. And you wanna see the cool stuff. The real good stuff. The I've done this myself stuff. And our first guest, he's a, he's a good one to have. He's already, a, he's working. Justin, what are you making? I don't know, like a trough or something? I don't know. <laughs> we, can, we can like do something faster. <laughs> so we got some new welders. And he wanted to try it out too. Dude, that's just like auto set. You I, didn't, like, I didn't get to play with it yet. You just turn it on and go. Well, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, man, how are you? How do you like the new livery? This thing is amazing. It looks so good. What's up with it, man? Well, first off, we did a uh, 2018 front end on it. This is my old competition car, but we updated the front end. Super easy, change out the core support, everything else bolts on. Uh, so, so this is a brand new front end? Brand new front end, the 2018 it looks front end. slick, man. Has all the Roush features on it, the side pockets, the front lip. It's so uh, aggressive. Upper and lower grills. Definitely adds a little flavor to the factory Ford one. Oh yeah, definitely. What else are we rocking that's new on the outside here? Well, underneath the wrap is actually all carbon fiber. So it's carbon fiber hood, fenders, doors, quarters, trunk. So what on this is metal? Anything? Uh, the roof. The roof is still metal? Yeah, the roof is still metal. All right, metal. all right. How much does it weigh? This thing is actually 3,000 pounds. So 3,800 3, pounds, 3,850 about is what a factory Mustang weighs. This is down to 3,000 pounds. With the cage, with everything else, and now you get the rear radiator and everything like that. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. So, what wheels are we rocking right now? These are the Four Star F14. Uh, we switched from Weld to Four Star. Actually, Weld uh, acquired Four Star, so they thought this would be a better fit for the Formula Drift series. I'm pretty stoked on them. Super concave. I, I definitely dig, dig the yeah. concave look. I really like the lip wheels, but I think with this livery, it needs white wheels. Yeah, I agree with you. Man, you nailed it. It looks amazing. So what size tire are we running? Uh, 295, 40, 18, 615K, Falcon 615K plus in the back. 255, 40, 18 in the front. So some monster grip this season. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about the inside of it now. What'd you do here with the cage? So this is a fully tick welded cage, full gussets. Who did this cage? This, that That's what I'm work. talking yeah, about. That yes. would be my work. Not only can he wheel, he's a great driver. He does all his own fabrication and built his own car. That's one of the reasons I really love JTP is he is the man. I enjoy the full range of hot rodding. Yep. Uh, you know, build your own stuff, make it your own style and then I'm just fortunate enough to wheel it too. Show it off to me, man. Let's see your work. You know, full form of the spec cage. Got a little crazy with like one piece gussets. Oh, wow. All the way from here, look at that. Fully, that is crazy. Fully gusseted. It's pretty time consuming, but it definitely stiffens up uh, the chassis. If you don't do any type of gusseting or anything, you're going to get flex between the cage and the chassis. Yeah. If you've ever, driven a car that has a cage like on the street and you go into like a, a driveway or something that has like major like articulation, mm -hmm. you can feel the chassis flex in between the I've, cage. I've actually done it before where I put my finger hand. in between it. You know, just like kind of riding along with somebody and it pinch your hand. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, so I've just noticed that. That takes so. away all the chassis flex. So um, you, basically a whole thing stitch welded now. Yeah, front to back. Front to back. It's kind of hard everywhere, to see in there, but. Everywhere that is uh, well, I think this is necessary, like all the, the frame rails, strut towers, we'll see a little bit more when we look in the uh, engine bay, everything uh, around the strut towers, Any, anything that ties the chassis or like the floor pan to the suspension components, I stitch welded. Is this Super a factory stock. dash? Yeah. 
I, I Did really, you kind of gut it out or? Yeah, it's completely gutted. It's, it's actually just all plastic. So instead of doing yeah. a composite, I thought it would be cool. It looks cool because it's like a stock dash. It, it looks so a clean. Flavor. But then again, it um. So these were air vents before, correct? Yeah, it, Roush actually makes uh, those gauge potholes. Wow, those are really cool. That's a serious handbrake you got there, bud. Yeah, that's a JCP handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> so you like it close there? You keep yeah. it real close to the wheel? Yeah. That's a right driving between, preference? I mean, I never did a pullback handbrake. I always did a pull up because it's more like street style. I actually changed to a uh, pullback in 24, or 2015 and I haven't gone back. It's, it's just really convenient because your hands are on the steering wheel in between the shifter and it's right there. Instead of having the, the weight to go and grab it here, it's just super yeah. convenient. What else uh, on the interior is your, your flare? I want to walk over to the driver's side. I want to see, see where the, where the yeah where the office is, where, where the work is done. So again, it's just really simple. I mean, um, the gauges are the, the main things that I need to keep tabs on. So you have nothing here for display? No, it's just the gauges that are in the center. This is kind of open just to get to the brakes, um, like for bleeding the brakes and refilling the, the brakes. quick access. Yeah, super. That's, cool. that's awesome, actually. That's I, just, I really like to keep it simple. Um, yeah, see all the masters up in there? That's really cool. So that's a full, like, wood, wood assembly. Do you like that pedal box? I do. I yeah, do. yeah, it works really well. And the steering looks amazing too. Just that whole assembly. I'm actually like using the bottom portion of the factory steering column. Okay. Um, the top portion has like all the controls and is like really bulky and heavy. So I basically machined an adapter joint that goes into the factory lower column and then just adapted it to um, I think that's three quarter or five eighths. I can't remember offhand. And I just then machined. Um, like machine this down and made a little slip joint and well um, done. just kind of built it all. Another thing this is kind of like fun about this car is it uses a factory electronic rack. Really? Fully electric, like no like electric hydro to hydro rack, it's full right. electric. So we can do like a little fun thing where you just flip the ignition on. Obviously the car is not on. It just, and it's like full. Oh wow. Yeah. Look at the lock on this thing. We're gonna talk about that later, but just while it's on the ground, look, go full lock right. I wanna see that. Ridiculous. What else you got sleek on the interior? Anything we need to know about or anything you wanna um, keep well, secret? I mean, like the, the wiring, I know like a lot of people use like motorsports wiring, but we're not racing 24 hours in these cars. Granted, if you can afford a $10,000 wiring harness, Good for you. I just use a simple painless harness. Um, I use like their circuit breakers, their switches. I build all my own stuff. I don't use like a pre. You can see the ECU equipment. over here. Oh, the ECU is super simple too. It's just factory. Really? So, yeah. So it's it's up on the firewall there. Mm -hmm. That's just a factory 11 to 14 ECU. Wow. This is so light. Carbon door, but it's still cut out. Just to take more weight out of it. <laughs> more weight. Even still, look, this is not glass. No, that's, that's Lexan. It's Lexan. But it looks so clean. But still, it's like you're saving weight in every single place you can. Everything. Amazing though. You've done a really good job with the rear radiator setup. It's really cool. Oh, we could check that out. Kind yeah, of let's, like let's take a look at I, I want to see what you got here. If you don't know this guy, watch some videos of him. I've seen you put this rear end on the wall quite a few times. I want to see what's keeping you, well, we keeping you alive. We engineer the back of the car to take a hit. I mean, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to be like rubbing taillights against walls. That's especially at Long Beach. Like that's what we do. So we cut off the back end of the car. Um, terminated the frame rails, double walled it, so it's, it's extremely strong. Obviously, it's it's dirty. This car has been battled out for the last couple of years, but you know it, get, it gets used. So it's cool. These these are removable here, and I'm assuming you have multiple. Yeah. So we I, we got a jig where we can just like build or build tons of these, and they're kind of like throwaway. Yeah. I mean, so you, just, you, you smash bring them, you put a new one. On. Bringing extra ones to the track. This this is actually a lot stronger um, to kind of save the radiator and that sort of thing. Um, it, these aren't, this isn't really engineered, uh, the center section isn't really engineered to fail, but the, uh, the sides are definitely engineered yeah, to fail. Because that's probably where it's going to happen. So, but there's lots of room for, for yeah, movement. a bunch of flex. And uh, it just pops right That's what looks place. cool. I've got to some footage of JTP, sending it on a wall. <laughs> Yeah.
He does it all the time. And uh, the rear radiator is looking sick. Yeah, so I, I teamed up with CNR this year. They actually took the radiator setup that I built, put it all in CAD, and they came back with this, which is an updated version of what I designed. And it is amazing. It looks um, really cool. They maximized on the front side, they actually put a full face uh, heat exchanger. So the front is a heat exchanger for the supercharger, the rear is the radiator wow. for the engine. That's Completely awesome. maximized. They do now, yeah, work. you can you can kind of see through there. There is it looks like one piece if you're just looking at it here. I didn't even notice that. That's really cool. Yeah, they did so, an awesome job. Yeah, I think most people put the radio in, in the rear for weight distribution. We're trying to get the car 50/50 as close as possible. The other thing is, is if you get into a front um, crash and you have the radiator up there, there's more of a chance that you aren't going to get the car back on track. Uh, no, did you notice a difference in the heat? Like. Yeah, I mean, my car runs super cool. I can kill a whole set of tires and not even get up to boiling, like 212. Really? Like, it's it really... Do you, just, do you idle there the whole time? Do you idle in uh, the practice lane? Do you idle at yeah, qualifying? Yeah, I, I don't do, like, don't turn it off or you anything get, like that. I just make a run, go let the fans do their job, and let the cooling system do their job. I feel and, like uh, you're sitting in there with AC on. I wish I had. <laughs> it's like a fan. It gets hot. It gets yeah. Hot. Do you run a cool suit? No. No, you no, just no take cool it. Suit. Take the heat. Just handle it like a man. A lot of people put the radiator in front of the fuel cell, but my theory is that you don't want any hot air going onto the fuel. The cooler that you can have the fuel, the more horsepower you're right. going to have. I'm sure you kind of balanced everything. And, and Yeah, I'm, a, I'm still a little heavy in the front from where I would like to be. So the new chassis, I'm changing some stuff to help get the chassis where I want it to be. I'm actually, the new chassis, I'm doing no gussets. I just bent the cage so it touches the chassis and I welded the cage directly to the chassis. It's just a cool. different way of going about it. I want to see a little bit more. I want to see what's under the hood. What do you think? There's a rotary in here? Factory core support. It's metal and plastic. It doesn't weigh much. It bolts right in and everything bolts right to See, it. See, I didn't know that. I didn't, Super I didn't know I you mean, kept that. a lot that. of people build their core supports or build front ends. Not that I can't do it, but I just don't want to do it when I can just right. order apart from Ford. It bolts in perfectly, holds the headlights, holds the bumper. It's not heavy. So I assume you have multiple of these. Yeah. Look at Just a few Go bolts. The Ford dealership and... A few bolts. Yeah. Super simple. Dude, we're in a sport that we're, the judges want us inches apart. We're going to hit people. It yeah. just, it, it happens. Everybody hits everybody. So this is... Probably the first one that I've seen that's just a factory core support. And the cool thing about these is that it's un, you can unbolt it. You know, the S197 cars, you couldn't unbolt the core support. Yeah. So it was one of those things I saw and I was like, oh, that's kind of like race car S right there. So what are we powered by? We are powered by a five liter, 302 cubic inch Coyote Illuminator. It's a high compression. So this is a straight crate motor. No unicorns, just go to your Ford catalog and order your illuminator package. The only thing I do to this engine is change the plugs to a little bit colder plug. I add the radio. What plug you running in it? Uh, just an NGK. NGK? And then I put the radium fuel rails, the full radium fuel system, and um, some injector dynamics injectors. What but size uh, are the injectors? 1700 cc full stainless because I run Ignite ethanol. Yeah. Um, so we want to run all stainless everything on the fuel system along with PTFE lines so that you don't have any um, expansion of like rubber or anything like that. Right. Man, look at all the hoses running straight. So they, have, they just all go to bulkheads on the uh, firewall, drop down from the firewall to the floor, run underneath the car back to the uh, radiator. So they're coming, they're coming to here. So the metal box that's on the floor. Right. There's actually fittings and hoses that go, drop it down to the other side of the frame rail, run underneath. Uh, to top it off, what makes all the power is this Roush supercharger. Yep. 2.3 liter, it's not a big displacement supercharger, but it you does can't make forget about that, horsepower. look at that big guy. How much power? 1,000 horsepower. 1,000 horsepower. 1,000. This is a catalog, like part numbered crate motor with <laughs> an off the shelf supercharger. Have you had any issues over the past few seasons with, no, with engine problems? This is the same supercharger that's been on the car for the last three years. It's awesome, man. I mean, look at this. What is this? That's a factory air box. It's insane. Different crank pulley. Yeah, we got a 15% um, ATI uh, super damper on there. The whole feed setup is 
the VMP performance um, eight rib setup. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to a smaller pulley. It's a 72 millimeter pulley. It's not even their smallest pulley. Um, Do you have any have problems with the belt slipping or? Not with this setup. Uh, I just went to this right off the bat because I knew that I was going to be putting the six rib through its paces. So we updated to the, the A rib and we have had no belt failures. I mean, this is the same belt that's been yeah, out it's, forever. You can see it's a little we, worn I mean, I'll, I'll probably end up swapping that out before the season starts just for regular maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. It's um, a really powerful engine and it's very it simple and basic and for, reliable. For what it is, it, it, it would be very easy to replicate. I think we're kind of... Uh, Done with it on the ground here. Let's look underneath it. Let's let's get it up on the lift. Well, we're still on the drive line here. Well, here's your electric steering. Yeah. So this is full electric rack. This is the. ECU. Have you, ever, have you ever had an issue of hitting that or? No. Would your steering go out if it? Uh, I'm sure it probably would. And I've actually like bounced off walls and the rack is still good. Everything is extremely beef with this. Even the rod, the, the inner tie rods are super beef. Those things are massive. So what trans are you running in here? This is the Andrews products A431 trans. It's basically the same transmission that um, the top teams in NASCAR are running. A lot, so, of, a lot of guys run uh, G-Force boxes, but you know I've been working with Andrews for a long time. I've been driving on their transmission since 2010, and this thing is just phenomenal. Four-speed? Four-speed dog box, yeah. So you've not had any issues with it? No, this thing shifts like butter. How's the gearing? Uh, specific to how I like it, but yeah. it's really good. Over the years, I've kind of came up with a setup that works best for me. What clutch are you running? Exidy Twin Disc. That's just an off-the-shelf clutch. Nothing special, but it holds a ton of power. Really? Yeah, it's the same clutch that you would put in your street car. And I get a full season out of that thing. When I took over my program, I really looked for a clutch company that can make something that would be, like, fail-proof. Just Exidy delivered. Uh, like I said, I put That's one clutch in at the beginning of the year. I'll do about 18 events, and I take it out and replace it just because you know, they're a sponsor and they give me another clutch to put in, but to be honest, it's still good at the end of the year. That's amazing. It's, it is amazing. For you take it out sure. and put it in your street car. Absolutely. <laughs> so these headers and collectors, these are, are these factory or? Those are made by Cooks. Cooks. Uh, yeah, Cooks, um, they're inch and seven eighths. So they're, they're kind of big daddies. Yeah. Um, but you need big daddies to make a lot of power. And what you got here with this mesh? This, that's a little uh, rubber deflector. So this, this whole collector here like to just catch rubber on fire and obviously as you're drifting you're flinging rubber into here and there's multiple times people be fire fire and I'm just like it's cool it's, <laughs> it's just rubber on the headers. It's just my headers. So, so when um, the wheels are turned like these get super sticky. Yeah so when the wheels turn it obviously yeah. is like directly just in line. Straight in there. So. These are so sticky and it'll grab pebbles, everything off of the pavement, whatever's there, on there, yeah. it'll just fling everything in so there. So yeah, one of my crew guys was like, hey, well, I'm just gonna stick this little mesh in there. I was like, that's an awesome idea. Super, <laughs> then it stuck. Super easy, yeah, and it's yeah, there. That's a really good idea. Yeah, one big one piece drive shaft, man, that thing's huge. Yep, drive, drive shaft shop, drive shaft. Uh, it goes back to a drive shaft shop nine inch conversion. What's so, up with the axles? They're a drive shaft shop yeah, as well? Yeah, so it's a drive shaft shop uh, nine inch uh, with drive shaft shop axles. Getting back to the nine inch, uh, it's a, a Ford nodular um, third member and then I'm actually running Rave gears. It's the same uh, company, uh, Andrews actually distributes them, but it, it's the same process that Andrews does to their gears, gear sets and their transmissions. They do them to a ring and pinion and these things are extremely buff. That looks really heavy. <laughs> it is not light for sure. All the suffering bushings have been replaced with the Ford Performance uh, bushing kit. You know, that's just uh, off the shelf catalog part. Is it like a snap ring up yeah, there? Yeah, snap ring. Oh. Yep. Delrin inserts, so there's a little bit of uh, play. Solid uh, diff bush or uh, suffering bushings. And then lots of stuff going on on the suspension. The I work with uh, a whole hometown fabricating. They, they actually built all my suspension, uh, the rear suspension. I prototyped the front suspension to kind of get the geometry that I was looking for. Let's go back to the front and let's talk about the suspension. I, I feel like we've covered some of the drive line here, but, but this is one of the most key elements to drifting. Look at this. Look at the angle of this. It looks like it's folded over. It looks like it's broken. It's like to four, normal four people. Lift. 
forklift steer. Yeah, to normal people, this looks broken. They, they don't understand why this is gonna happen. Yeah. How many degrees do you have here? 76 or 74 76. or something? I don't know, it's a lot. It's incredible. It's enough, this, I think. Look at that. That's a forklift. And I've seen you use it. I know you use it. I, I've seen you use every bit of this. <laughs> I love everything about it. Look at how cut that cut out this is. That's that's so the wheel will fit back in there <laughs> because it's gonna lock so hard. You got to be able to fit the wheel back in there. Well, that actually, it's, um, I have this like drop down just for the tie rod clearance. So at full droop or full bump, there's no interference. It's kind of a weird setup because factory this car is actually a dual lower uh, control arm. So. I took, it's a dual lower pivot point as well, kind of like a BMW or whatnot. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't work well for drifting because when you have two pivot points, you're going to get into bind. So I went to a single lower pivot and kind of had to like design this to work with that type of setup. And what about the knuckle? Is it? A fully fabricated knuckle. Uh, I basically took a factory knuckle, cut the bottom or milled the bottom off of it uh, machined some adjustable pickup points, played around with it for like two weeks, and these are the pickup points that I came up with. Are they factory hubs or? Yeah, factory hub. Factory hub? Yeah, factory hub. And what about the brakes? What are you running here? Willwood. Willwood? Yeah, I'm running all Willwood six piston kit. What suspension are you run? Uh, KW Motorsports coilovers. So they have uh, external reservoir, triple adjustable. You know, we designed the top hat. Um, actually, John, JSP Fab. Man, that's uh, cool. Machine those out for me. That's that, really cool. That goes along with the angle kit. I actually sell this angle kit. So with the control arm, the outer tie rod, the knuckle, and the top hat. But you can basically use Y'all Mustang, guys. If you want to buy this. Look, want to look at that. Head. Look at it. It's insane. How much you charge for something like I mean, that? Uh, it's twenty about twenty eight hundred bucks. Twenty eight hundred bucks. That's Both pretty seven. standard. But I mean, for... think about like where you could park. You, know, you <laughs> could do U turns in like a single lane road. Here maybe. in Long Beach, that's you very could, important. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mustang yeah. guys are gonna freak when they see this because uh, there's yeah. not too much available for it. Not really. Well, that's why I had to design my own stuff. Now, how soft is the rear here? Like, it's I mean, obviously you can tell with the spring, it's pretty soft. Um, you got a lot of travel like yeah i mean we're ready to go off-roading kind of you have so much movement in the car and we run on tracks like new jersey where you're coming off of bank going onto flat surface you want the car to be able to like move around and not bottom out i utilize a lot of like factory components because i think they're you know ford probably has some type of knowledge in engineering <laughs> stuff so yeah. i'm assuming that you feel like the car company did it right so i would think so they've been doing it a couple <laughs> years so. yeah well i'm excited to see this thing go man thanks for bringing this in it's, it's a beautiful beautiful car thanks again justin thanks man appreciate it you want to sell him something well. he's out of here He's gonna do my job for me, I'm leaving. That's a wrap! I'm unwrappable. You remember this? <laughs> you can't wrap JTP. I've already, we've already done this. That's so a wrap. I should just go work.